Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we're looking at High Bid, the auction game. Uh, this is a game of auctions, in case you hadn't guessed that. It's put out by uh, Bookshelf Games, 3M brand. Similar to kind of Avalon Hill. Um, who's the copyright to? Copyright 1965 by Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company. Mining and Manufacturing, who knew? So the back of the box, it kind of sets the, the date for it, because you could tell this is late 60s, early 70s. Turns out it's 65. So let's see what we got here. I haven't actually looked inside this one yet. Um, as you can see, this is kind of damaged here. Uh, that's pretty common that these cover pictures are going to get destroyed with uh, some of these older games. Now these bookshelf games came in a case like this and had a very simplistic look to them. So your rules are in the box lid so you need this box and everything else was in here. Now interestingly this uses a very specific D6. It's got 25 on twice and then it's got 50 twice and then a 75 and 100 so when you roll it you could be rolling 50 uh, 75 or 100 obviously let's get everything else out here this one is uh, ver these were kind of weird games oh here's the other dice it's got zero on one side four blank sides and then a 200 so there's a green die and a red die now these also had this piece come out, like this. And then there was the cardboard insert. And there's also a plastic piece that had the same kind of backing as the box that would hold the money and stuff like that. So if you were a banker, it would be fairly easy to do your job. So, yeah. So let's move the box out of the way. Now this has the cards on it. And on the back is the same color and texture as the box. Uh, these are pretty high quality for the time, especially. This is real high quality plastic for the late 60s or mid 60s. Um, and it's pre-printed like warehouse 25%, dealer 50%, gallery 75%, collector 100%. If this is broken, it's going to be kind of difficult because this stuff is important to the game. Um, and, but time is not going to be kind to this early plastics because older plastics tend to be not very durable. And uh, much like cheap plastic now, it, it's kind of what the high-end plastic was like then. So this is kind of a molded plastic that, honestly, if it wasn't taken good care of, could easily be broken or completely destroyed. So just be aware of that. Now the cards, on, the, on one side they have a picture of an auction scene, which is of course the back. And it's just the cover image to the box. Of course I show you a glare, that's handy. And then these have things like uh, Book, and the Encyclopedia Britannica, which hasn't been published in ages. Um, $1,000 collection, values 200, 150, 150, that sort of thing. So this is B3, it goes down. Then there's Shakespeare Collection, the Bible. Uh, we have a Queen Anne Parlor, uh, another Queen Anne Parlor, jewelry, figurines, miniatures. There's a buyer's card, prints, rare miscellaneous, mis yeah, that word's hard today. Figurines, miniatures, another Queen Anne parlor, tapestries, 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 figurines, Queen Anne parlor, another buyer card, jewelry, 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 sterling. Uh, that is a sterling uh, vase or vase. Then you've got a uh, sterling Gregorian silver candlesticks. 
Uh, coffee service three piece serving tray. Buyer card, buyer card, buyer card. Excuse me. Coins, 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 buyer card, miniatures, uh, dancer Persian oil, figurines, antique clocks, um, dueling pistols, oriental table lamp, jade base, old English barometer, buyer card, imported rock crystal, hand cut crystal punch bowl set, rare sandwich glass face, Courier Knives Train Print, Buyer Card, uh, Cuckoo Clock, Mantle Clock, um, Rembrandt Etching, and a Goya Color Print. Color is spelled with a U. So, obviously this is British, or at least that word is. Uh, these cards are um, like normal playing card types, but they do, these are warped a little bit, a couple of them, because they were in the box at a funny angle. So, kind of check the cards to get an idea of uh, what condition they're in before you buy it. Let's get that out of the way. And then the money, you've got several stacks here. You've got a 10, which uh, has a silly little picture on it. And some random numbers and letters, but it's just a $10 looking bill. Then there's um, a 20 which there's quite a few of these um, for each stack. There's a hundred and then there's a thousand. Which has this uh, Grant looking guy on it. Now I don't know if there was supposed to be a 50 in there. Let's see if it's got a uh, list here of contents. Nope. No content list. Okay, wait, here we go. The game board and dice, property cards, buyer's cards, dice and game board, which we just looked at. Play money, there are um, tens, twenties, hundreds, and thousands. There's no fifties, which I find a little weird. So yeah, this game is pretty much complete. I think a few of the thousand dollar bills might be missing, but I kind of doubt it. Usually they give you less of the higher denominations, because you don't really need them through the game. So uh, the pieces that would I would guess would be missing would be this tray because you, it looks like you might have had to put this one together. Um, either that or it's just really cheap plastic. And I'm guessing it's just cheap plastic. Um, the contents of the box are almost as important as the box itself because the instructions for the game are on the box. They're on the lid to the box. So remember that when you're, you're looking at this one. Uh, because you kind of need to have that. You need to have the lid in order to play the game. And the two dice, of course, these are very specific dice that you'd probably have a hard time um, finding. Uh, you could probably modify a D6 with a, a marker or something or find some blank dice and replicate them. Because the 25 is directly across from the other 25 and the 50 is right across from the other 50. And the 75 is across from the 100. And on this one, the 200 and the 0 are on opposite sides and the rest are blank. So you could recreate these with some blank dice. Uh, but it's always nice to have the originals. And finding these specific dice will probably be very difficult. So be aware of that. The money you could probably replace with from some other game. It won't be perfect but it'll work you know they're about the same size as monopoly money uh the instructions like i said are on the game lid so be aware of that uh the cards i think if you have the majority of the cards you'll be okay playing it doesn't say how many cards are supposed to be in the deck but i think i've got most of them here at least um yeah it's best played with two to four players you could get five uh, five may participate if the auctioneer does not also play in the game. The auctioneer uh, does play in the game. So that is pretty much it.
That is the contents of High Bid, the auction game. I've heard it's pretty fun. I don't think I've ever played this one. It is kind of hard to get it back in the stupid box, though. So, uh, you can usually find these online. Uh, they're, they go for about the same price as some of the, the uh, low-end Avalon Hill games. Uh, they also do turn up occasionally at thrift stores and collector shops. But, honestly, I don't know I would pay more than 10 or 20 bucks for it. But, I don't know how fun it would be by today's standards. But, for the 60s, it was one of those alternative type games that you know the monopoly crowd i don't think would have really gotten into but it could be fun uh it's a bookshelf game so it, it literally fits on a bookshelf and it's about the same size as uh it's actually a little smaller i think than the dnd second edition box sets if that gives you an idea but that'll do it for this episode as always thank you for watching and we hope to see you next time on what's inside